The Lord is so good to us. Do you realize He doesn't give us one dream? He gives us many and many and many dreams. And just when we think that we're out of dreams, God gives us more. More opportunities, more blessings, more things than we never thought could happen. You think about the dreams that people have. You know, the pilgrims were over there in England and wanted to come over here for religious freedom. And they had to do a lot of big dreaming and wound up here and wound up with an incredible struggle, and yet they persevered. But look further back, Christopher Columbus. Everybody says the world is flat. If you sail that way west, you're going to fall off the earth. And lo and behold, he found over half the world. You've got to chase your dreams. You've got to seize the moment. You've got to look for opportunities God has for you. But I'll tell you this. God uses these dreams we get to shape our lives. And when we're in the midst of going through a dream, what happens? Trials come. Problems come that stretch us and make us seriously consider what we're doing. What's God working on? God's more concerned about our character than the contribution in this world we make. Because our character is who we are. And think about our accomplishments. I see many times when there's a, a state sale, uh, they have these little all this great furniture and things like that, but they'll see some trophies over here. Does anybody want those old trophies? No, they're, just, they're over there in the corner. Nobody wants those things. Because God is more interested in you than your accomplishments. Because your accomplishments will remain after you leave here. Who you are is what goes to heaven. So that's what matters. Now today we're looking at a man named Jacob. Interesting fella. We see the good, the bad, the ugly, and back all around with him. One thing you know about Jacob, you better keep your eyes on him because he's going to be up to something. That's just Jacob. And God's got a big dream for him. But he is not ready yet. He's going to be challenged as never before. Now, there's four phases he goes through about his dream how God challenges him and makes him the man he became. And it's the same four steps that we all go through. So let's look at it, the dream. In Genesis 28, verse 11. When Jacob reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. He found a smooth stone for a pillow and lay down to sleep. Then God gave him a dream in which he saw a stairway going from earth to heaven. And the angels of God were going up and down the stairs. At the top of the stairway was God who said, I am the same Lord of Abraham, your grandfather, and Isaac, your father, and I'm going to give you and your descendants all the land on which you're sleeping. And your descendants will be spread all around the world, and all the peoples of the earth are going to be blessed by your future generations. I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to watch over you wherever you go. But one day I will bring your people back to this land. When Jacob spoke up, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not even aware of it. Then he was afraid and said, This place is awesome. It is the house of God, the gateway of heaven. So early the next morning, Jacob got up and took the stone he used for a pillow and stood it upright as a memorial marker. Then he anointed the stone with the oil, and named the place Bethel, which means house of God. Then Jacob made this a vow to God. If you'll be with me, I will honor you with my life, and I will give back to you a tenth of all you give to me. Now, is this the end? It's not even the beginning. The beginning happened a long time ago when Jacob was born. And this is just the starting point of a major dream for him. But God was already working on him. The same with us. God's working on us over time trying to bring the events to pass that will help us in this life. Now here's the problem with Jacob. 
he's not ready for the dream yet. He's been touched by God, but he's not ready for that dream yet that God has for him. And you may not be ready for the dream yet, or you may be in the midst of your dream that God has for you. But let's look at four phases that God will take us through. Because he's getting us ready to accomplish great things, but it all begins with his dream. So first of all, the crisis phase of our dream, I struggle with God and others. Amazing. So we tend to think, well, I'm going to struggle with other people. But no, we also struggle with him and with God. And it's a struggle. So you say, well, I'm in a crisis right now. Congratulations. You say, well, thanks a bunch. I don't want to be in a crisis. Well, that's a good place to be because God is working with you. He's getting ready to give you a dream, so get ready for it. You know, I don't know what your trial may be. It could be a physical crisis, financial crisis, a relational crisis. Whatever it may be, God's going to deal with you on some things. Consider this. Jacob had lots of problems. You know, when he was born, he, was, he had a twin brother. And coming out of the womb, he still had hold of his brother's leg. His brother was already out. He was just hanging on to him. Always getting, trying to deceive, trying to do somebody in. He deceived his father, deceived his brother, deceived his father-in-law, deceived other people. I mean, this guy was always looking for a place to happen, for trouble. That was him. So conflict followed Jacob, and so he's got a problem. Now, in Genesis 32, 22, God is about ready to give him some information. That night, Jacob sent his family across the Jabbok River. Then Jacob was left alone in the camp. And a man came and wrestled with Jacob all night. Now, in the Hebrew, you look at it, see, it's Jacob and Yabak uh, for the river, the Yabak for the river, Yabak for Jacob. Because, uh, Jacob is actually a German translation of the Hebrew. That's how you get the J. And so it's a play on words between the two. He sent them across, and then he's still there. And so what's going to happen? There became a wrestling match. Now, it's not, you know, usual wrestling match. You have so many uh, sessions, you know, this round and another round and another round. Well, this is just one long round and went overnight. So it's not a WWF match. It's something far greater than that. In fact, this is the biggest wrestling match of Jacob's life. And when you get there, you will be in that same type of match. Jacob has struggled all of his life. And now he's struggled in a wrestling match all night. And it's not over yet. In Hosea chapter 12, verse 3. Hosea 12, 3. Before Jacob was born, he struggled with his brother. And when he became a man, he fought with God. I don't know about you, but your arms are kind of too short to box with God. It's just kind of doesn't work very well. You know, think about this application for a second. Will I obey God with what I know he wants me to do now? A lot of people know what they're supposed to do, but they won't jump off the cliff. They say, well, I know God wants me to do it. He wants me to take this action. I know I'm supposed to do it. I know how to do it. But I just can't get off and do it. One of these days, God's going to be waiting. You know, I wanted to give you a bunch of blessings, but you wouldn't take that step of faith. Do you realize your step of faith is your beliefs in action? You say, I believe God. I know what he wants me to do. Okay, act on it. Move on it. Don't sit around the premises. Act on it. And here's the thing. Do you really trust God to take care of that situation? Or do you want that situation all just right and just formatted just right, and then you'll go? No, there's a big element of faith. You've got to say, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to act on faith, and I will take that leap no matter who it is anybody says or how they say it yes I could become a laughing stock of the whole city but big deal I'm going to believe that God is going to help me through the situation and what about this do you really believe 
God's going to take care of you? Or do you have to take care of yourself? You know what? I'm going to trust God's going to take care of me. I don't have the wisdom to really take care of myself as I should. Because the root of all of our problems is really a struggle with God. What does God want me to do? Will I do it? And that's where the peace comes in when you take that leap and you go, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to take the jump. And watch how God shows you things you never dreamed possible in your life. Consider this. Can you imagine wrestling with somebody all night? That's what Jacob did. He wrestled with God all night. Now, what's the goal of wrestling? To pin your opponent's shoulders on the mat. To make him cry uncle. Make him say, I give up. Make his corner throw in the towel. Give up. God's got his attention in this crisis. What is he going to do? What are you going to do with the crisis you're going through? I encourage you to trust God with all of your heart and put your beliefs in action by taking that leap of faith. So that's the crisis. Second, is the commitment phase. God tests my faith in his promise to bless me. God tests my faith in his promise to bless me. It's a commitment. Jacob says, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. And God's telling him, I'm going to bless all these generations. I'm going to do all this. Okay. Are you going to trust him, Jacob? In Genesis 32, verse 24, Jacob wrestled with his, this man until dawn. When the man saw he couldn't win the match, he struck Jacob's hip and knocked it out of joint at the socket. Then the man said, let me go for it's dawn. But Jacob panted, I won't let you go unless you bless me. I don't know about this, but if your hip is out of joint, that's a painful experience. You know, it's dawn. Hey, let's, let's get this thing going. He's setting this up for Jacob. Jacob is worn out. He's tired. And yet Jacob realizes this is something very special, that he's blessing, he's wrestling with God, and he wants a blessing. He said, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. You know, you've got a hunger and thirst for what God wants you to do. You've got to take hold with all of your heart. Amen. Don't hold anything back. And Jacob, even though he was hurting from his hip, he says, I'm not letting go no matter what. I'm not going to stop this until you do this blessing for me. He's coming to the point of commitment. And that's what we all need to get to is that point of commitment. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, I believe. Another thing, I'm really commit to this for the long haul. Do you realize God's not coming along to thwart your dreams? You know, some people think, well, if I do what God wants me to do, well, my life won't be like I want it. Well, it'll probably be a lot better than what you wanted. You realize that. Because he's God and you're not, and what you think it may be wonderful, God's got a much better plan than you. Yeah. Commitment. So he's not here to thwart your dreams. He's here to make your dreams much better. And he's here to test your faith, your trust, your sincerity. Are you really real? Think on this. Some people say, well, if I'm a Christian, then everything's supposed to go right. No. God's going to put you the refining fires to challenge your faith, to refine your faith. See, some people think, well, I just say a little prayer. Say these little things. There'll be people that will look to the Bible and they'll say, well, if I say this little formula, then God must do this. Yeah, yeah really. You're going to dictate to God what God's going to do? Not going to happen, people. God is not your slot machine. He's not your vending machine. and He's not your genie. You know, genie, I have all three wishes, okay? Do my wishes. God's not your genie. He's God. And when you make all these requests and these demands and so forth, God just sits back there and laughs. Yeah, really? <laughs> you realize God has a great sense of humor or we wouldn't be here much longer, would we? Yeah. 
We get grace, but he's got to have a sense of humor. Yeah, really, you're going to command me, the creator of the universe, to do that? Get real. God has greater plans for you. But you've got to get through that commitment and follow through on that. Consider Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. Too many times people miss blessings because they give up too soon. They say, well, I tried it. I put some effort into it, but it just didn't happen. They give up too soon, and they miss it. It's kind of like the Comstock mine, you know, copper mine over in California. These guys were digging and digging, and um, they were looking for gold. Actually, it's not not copper, they were looking, looking for gold, but what they didn't realize, they found silver. And they got all mad with all this blasted blue stuff, and they gave up on it, and somebody else came along, hmm, that's silver. And it was the biggest load of silver ever. And it's because the first guys gave up because it, they were, it didn't yield what they were looking for. They yield something way more valuable in the long run because all the silver was there, not just a little bit of gold. Give up too soon. And a lot of times in life, people, they're working towards something, they have a dream, they have a goal, and they just get tired and worn out and say, well, I'm just going to give up. When the blessings God had for them are just one step more. So don't give up. God gives you the vision, the dream. Break right through that wall. Don't give up. Don't quit. It's always too early to quit. Keep focusing forward. Jacob wouldn't let go until God blessed him. Don't let go of your dream until God blesses you. Hang in there. Three. Here's the confession phase. I admit that I am my biggest problem. Mm. Mm. I admit I am my biggest problem. You go, what, what do you mean? Yeah, look in the mirror. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer, right? It's not my husband or my wife, my parents, my kids. It's me, oh Lord, causing a lot of the problems by my reactions. See, it's here. We like to say, well, they did this or they did that or somebody or they kept me. No. Here. Here's the problem. It's our worries, our anxieties, our fears, resentment, shame, guilt, worry, anxiety. That's where it is. It's here. There's no victory in the wrestling until you take responsibility for your own actions. It just doesn't happen. Consider this. Genesis 32, 27. The man asked him, what is your name? My name is Jacob, he answered. You say, well, that's a strange request. They've been fighting all night and they don't even know each other's name. You realize God never asks a question that he doesn't already know the answer to it. He wants us to realize where we are. So what does that mean? Your name is your label. Many of us pray the prayer of Jabez. It's in... in the scripture it talks about how we ought to pray. Well, what does Jabez, his name mean? It's very important. It means painful. You say, painful, yes, because the scripture says his mother had a very painful delivery when she had him, so he was painful. What about Jacob? Jacob, the original text means deceiver or manipulator. Mm, there it is. So he said, now tell me your name. Oh, I'm the deceiver. I'm the manipulator. Okay. Mm, there's a problem there. Now, do you realize up to that point, Jacob always lived up to his name. Whenever he had a chance to, to tell the truth or to deceive somebody, he deceived them every time. So first he conned manipulated his dad. Then he did so to his brother. Then his father-in-law. Then other people. And it's no wonder he's always running. You realize he's always having to take off in the middle of the night. 
tried to escape and get away. Now here we're getting a little personal. What would be your worst characteristic of your life? And you were called by that. Hmm. Selfish, arrogant, deceitful, prideful. What would be your name? No, I'm not going to ask you to say it. <laughs> no. But what would be your, yours? That's something to seriously think about. The Bible wants us to reach our dream. But to get there, we need God's grace. And first, we've got to confess who we are and realize I've got a problem there and then deal with it. And it's not enough to identify it or what are you going to do about it? Or you can change the way you do things. With God's Holy Spirit within you, you can. Four, the conversion phase. God gives me a new identity and a dream. We need that. Notice, God is not going to leave Jacob as the deceiver. He sees a lot of potential in him. Tremendous. So Jacob, he admits it. Look in Genesis 32, verse 28. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob. Instead, you'll be called Israel. Then God blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face. So here's Jacob. He says, I'm not a politician anymore. I'm not going to play favorites. I'm not going to be the deceiver anymore. I'm going to be straight talking. He says, great. God says, now, I'm going to name a nation after you. And God blessed him after his confession. You realize more, God is more interested in who you'll be becoming than what your contribution is. Who are you? How you're being transformed by God every day. Think of this, his new identity. Israel means prince of God or prince with God, with God. So he's going from being the deceiver to being a prince with God. God changes his whole outlook in life by changing his name. God says, you know, I, I know your whole history, how you've conducted yourself, but you know what? I'm not starting a new chapter. I'm starting a new book on your life. And you're now going to be called Prince with God. Genesis 32, 31. The sun rose as Jacob left Penel, and he was limping because of his hip. See, what's significant about that? All through Jacob's life, he ran. When he messed up with his father, he ran. When he messed up with his brother, he ran. When he messed up with his father-in-law, he ran. He's always running until now. He can't. He's got a bad hip. He can't run anymore. So now, in his weakness, he's stronger because he's got to trust God now. Where before he trusted his own ability, his own intellect, his own deceiving techniques, now he's got to depend on God for his strength and his help and his wisdom. So he's stronger even though physically he's weaker. When we get to that point, that's when God can use us in ways we never dreamed. Because it's not about us, it's about him then. And trusting him. Do you realize God looks at all of his people and says, you know what? I see princes and princesses throughout my kingdom. I have transformed you from within, and God's going to make you fresh and new, and he's going to give you a new dream. Now, for some of us, we've had some dreams along we thought we had, and the dream has evaporated on us. Life has changed, and now we find ourselves in a new situation. It's time to dream again Amen. what God has for you. And God will shape you and make you and give you things you never dreamed possible. 
Don't give up and quit. Remember, it's always too early to quit, give up. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone belongs to Christ, they are a new creation. The old things are gone and everything is made new. So he transforms us. He doesn't leave us as we are, but makes us different. Now let's review right quick. Number one, what areas in your life are you struggling with God? Now your areas of struggle, just know, they could be the normal ones, but others, you may have lost a loved one. You may have some opportunity, you know, you've gone from a career, now you're retired. You go, now what do I do now? Maybe you've changed jobs, and you go, now I've changed this, now how's this new one going to work out? Or maybe you've had a baby born in your life, and you go, now what do you do with this thing? So there's lots of changes in life, and God changes in our life, and so therefore there's opportunities for new dreams that God has for us. So what are you struggling with right now? Know that God is aware of that struggle. And second, commitment. Commitment. This is where you do, it's faith in action. It's one thing to say, oh, I believe God. Okay, or you can jump off the hill. You've got to be willing to take that leap of faith and trust him. You know, Jacob Russell till dawn all night. He kept on and said he wouldn't let go of God. Just like he held on to his brother coming out of the room, he wouldn't let go of God until God blessed him. And you don't let go until, God, give me that blessing. I need your help. Now, his blessings may be in ways you never thought possible or would. And sometimes we think, well, it's, it's real small and insignificant. Just like when Elijah asked Gehazi, when Elijah had had called fire down from heaven, they were looking for rain, and he says, well, I, I see a little cloud like the size of a hand of a man. And Elisha says, let's run. And the cloud got bigger and bigger and bigger and just poured down rain. Sometimes we look at that blessing, it looks like it's insignificant. But when God is with that blessing, it can be way bigger than you ever hoped or dreamed. The third question is the confession question. What do you need to admit to God? What do you need to own up to God? God, I, I feel this way, can you help me? God, I've sinned. I need your help. God, I feel like my life is kind of falling apart. Please help me put it together. Admit it to God. The common denominator of our problems is you. you know, me. I've got my mirror here, too. And we need to always face up the truth. God, what do I need to do to change the situation? Because it's not them, it's me. And the fourth one. Will I let God give me a new identity. Christ wants to give you a brand new identity because your identity, what you think of yourself, is what you become. And so where before Jacob was a deceiver, now he's the prince with God. And you can be a prince or a princess with God because you're a believer and trust him to bring you through that. You know, it doesn't matter what other people have labeled you. Your, your parents, your peers, your spouse, whatever. It's what God wants to label you. So trust him as he puts the label on you, my child. And walk in strength and power of his presence in your life. Now, I've got just a little homework for you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This is real easy. It's a short verse. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Memorize that this week. Say, I can't memorize. Let me see. You remember where you live, don't you? You remember what car you drive? Yeah. You know your name, right? You can memorize. You can memorize that. There's nothing to it. If anyone belongs to Christ, he's a new creation. I want you to remember this week that you are a new creation in God, and he has great plans for you. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we pause this, evening, this morning, I want to thank you for our church family. I pray this message about Jacob will draw us home to you and get us ready to begin and prepare for the dreams of our life for the next years and decades and decades to come. I pray that you, we'll be willing that you'll help us struggle through this dream and the crises we're facing in our world. 
and overcome them with your power and love. We want to stop fighting with you. We want to walk with you and serve with you and follow you wherever you lead us. We're not shocked or ashamed of what we encounter in life because you're with us and we'll overcome all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.